Welcome boys and girls. Today is Monday, April 20th. To start our science lesson for this week, here is your warm up. I'd like for you to take a minute or two to read the question, circle any key words in your mind. I know it's hard to do without having it right in front of you. And then remember to rephrase the question to check your understanding, to make sure you understand what you are being asked and then eliminate choices you know are wrong. So our warm up question today is, which two systems are most likely both natural? Choice A, a train and train tracks. Choice B, a house and a garden. Choice C, a boat and the ocean. Or choice D, a coral reef and the ocean. Which two systems are most likely both natural? Go ahead and jot that answer down on a piece of paper and we will come back to the answer shortly. <laughs> share my thinking. So I reread the question and I focused on most likely both natural, both telling me that I needed two answers to be natural. Both have to be natural. So then I asked myself, natural, I heard that word before, natural, it sounds like nature. So I just jotted down from nature and then I looked at my choices to see if my thinking was making sense because after all every question asked there has to be a re valid reason for it why would you be being asked this question okay so choice a a train and train tracks well i know trains are able to drive through nature but they are not natural they're man-made they're machines that were made by man so right away this isn't right so therefore, the answer can't be A because it asks for both. B, a house and a garden. Oh, well, gardens are made by people, but sometimes they just grow. If seeds are blown in the wind, flowers may grow. So eh, that's debatable. So I kind of put a check because that was my thinking. 
So then I had to make sure I checked both answers and houses. Houses are man-made. They're not made naturally. C, a boat and the ocean. Well, the ocean is definitely made by nature, not man-made. So that's correct. But again, I had to check for both. Boats are not. And finally, choice D, a coral reef and the ocean. Well, I already know that the ocean is natural and a coral reef. I've heard about that before. I've seen them before and I know that they're within the bottom of the sea and bottom of the ocean. So therefore, choice D is the only answer that logically makes sense and fits the criteria of the question. Both natural. Both are naturally made. Okay, that is our warm-up for today. Get ready to move on. Okay, boys and girls, so we are going to start our distance learning with a review of living things. Specifically, living things need energy. Um, we began this topic shortly before we left school. Um, so some of these terms, these vocabulary terms will be familiar to you. Others may not, that's okay. We're going to learn about them as we read. We're going to use all of the skills that we have been taught while becoming good readers and writers to determine word meaning if we are unfamiliar. So let's begin with a quick review of the vocabulary. We have photosynthesis, the way plants use sunlight to make food. Environment, everything that surrounds a living thing. Food chain, the path of energy in the form of food going from one living thing to another. Producer, any living thing that makes or produces its own food. We have our consumer, a living thing that eats other living things. Decomposers, a living thing that breaks down dead plants and animals. Herbivores, animals that eat mostly plants. Carnivores, animals that eat other animals. Omnivore, an animal that eats both plants and animals. Food web, a way of showing how food chains in any place are linked together. Compete, to try to get the same thing that others need or want. Microorganism. Any kind of living thing that is too small to be seen with just our eyes. Bacteria, any of the smallest kind of microorganisms. A protist, a kind of microorganism larger than a bacteria. And fungus, a plant-like living thing that breaks down dead plants and animals. Okay, so that's, that was pretty quick. That's a lot to take in. But if at any time you need to review these terms, you can always pause the video and go back. So now we are going to move on. We're going to begin lesson one, and we're going to do our reading of plants and sunlight. And remember, while, we're re while we are reading, our big idea question that we're trying to answer when all is said and done is how do living things get energy to live and grow? How do living things get energy to live and grow? Lesson one, plants and sunlight. What are plants? Plants are living things. They are important for life on earth. For example, plants make food. The food we eat all starts out from plants. Plants also make oxygen. Oxygen is a gas we breathe. Plants give off oxygen into the air. Plants come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. For example, trees, grasses, and bushes are different kinds of plants. However, most plants have three parts. They have roots, stems, and leaves. And then over here, we have our illustration with some captions. Leaves collect light from the sun. They use the light to make food. Stems hold a plant up. Water and other materials move through a stem. 
they may go up to the leaves or down to the roots. The roots hold a plant to the ground. They take in water and minerals from the soil. So Wednesday, when we return, we will stop and we will review these quick check questions. Okay, here are some plants that hold world records. Some of them are natives of California. So here we have the redwoods. These are really big trees. Redwoods are the world's tallest plants. They grow in California. Some are over 100 meters tall. Some are over 2,000 years old. And over here we have bamboo. Bamboo plants are the fastest growing plants. Some bamboo plants grow more than two centimeters, about an inch an hour. Bristol cone pines. The oldest trees are the bristle cone pines. They live in California's White Mountains. One bristle cone pine is almost 5,000 years old. That's, that's pretty old. It's been around for a long time. Okay. Like I said, we'll return to the quick checks. All right. So now we're going to figure out, or learn about rather, how do plants get on energy? Most plants carry out photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the way plants make their own food. To make food, plants need sunlight, water, a gas, carbon dioxide. The food plants make is sugar. Let me, read, let me try that again. The food plants make is sugar. The sugar has energy in it. Plants need the energy to live and grow. When we eat plants, we get that energy. So on the right hand side, see a diagram of the process of photosynthesis occurring. So we're going to keep reading. Getting sunlight. Plants look green because they contain a green material, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll traps sunlight, energy from the sun. A plant uses the energy to make sugar. The sugar is made in their leaves. So let's take a look at our diagram over here. So of course we have our source of energy, which we learned about while learning the water cycle, right? And our sun is sending down its heat and rays. And our plant here is taking in the sunlight and it's making sugar. And while that's occurring, plants also take in water and nutrients from the soil. So we have some, some going up, some going down, completing this cycle okay so follow the arrows to see how a plant takes in sunlight water and carbon dioxide and gives off energy okay. getting water and carbon dioxide plants get water from the ground most plants you know have roots to take in water once inside the roots water travels up through thin tubes from the roots water goes up the stem from the stem, water goes into leaves. Carbon dioxide is a gas in the air. Plants have tiny holes to take in this gas. These holes are the stomata. They are on the bottom of each leaf. Carbon dioxide enters a leaf through the stomata. So over here on the right, we have this illustration here, it's a picture, and it is labeled stomata. So it's showing you these teeny, tiny little holes at the bottom of the leaf. So this photo shows the bottom of the leaf up close. The leaf here is shown over a hundred times larger than it really is. So it's magnified, it's zoomed in really big for us to be able to see that. Okay, and here we have another quick check. And we have a compare and contrast. So it's just a little preview of what we will be doing Wednesday. Why are plants important? Remember, the energy for living things comes from the sun. Plants can trap this energy. Plants use this energy to make food and oxygen. Food and oxygen are important to animals. Food. Animals need energy to live. They get energy from food. Animals cannot make their own food. They eat food that comes from plants. Here's how. So our cows grazing. 
So here's how our animals rely on plants for food. So how food is passed. Plants make their own food. An example, a leaf makes food. Some animals eat plants for food. Here's an example, a grasshopper eats the leaf. Some animals eat the animals that eat the plants. Example, a bird eats a grasshopper. The grasshopper eats the leaf and the leaf makes its own food. With the food, energy goes from plant to animal to animal. This is pretty. This environment is a rainforest. It is crowded with plants. Oxygen. Plants, makes, plants make oxygen for themselves and other living things. Animals need oxygen, but cannot make it. Most animals cannot live without oxygen for more than just a few minutes. Plants everywhere. Plants live in environments all over Earth. An environment is everything that surrounds a living thing. Plants live in all kinds of environments from deserts to oceans. Plants provide energy and food for living things around them. Okay, so that is the end of chapter one. Okay, boys and girls, that was the end of chapter one, lesson one. We are going to briefly summarize what we read. So the most important part or the main idea of each section within chapter one, lesson one, were plants are living things and come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. The food we eat all starts out from plants. Plants carry out photosynthesis to make their own food. This food is sugar and the sugar has energy in it. The green appearance of plants is due to their containing chlorophyll. Chlorophyll traps energy from the sun to produce sugar in the plant's leaves. Plants get water from the ground and carbon dioxide enters a leaf through their stomata. This is important because the energy for all living things comes from the sun and plants trap the sun's energy to make food and oxygen and living things need oxygen, food, and energy to live. Plants are everywhere in all types of environments. Okay, so now what I need for us to do is we are going to go we're going to go back to the text. And remember, you can do this by rewinding and pausing the video on the section where the, the text was present to help so you so that you can reread. So we're going to go back to the text to help you read tell or paraphrase the process of photosynthesis and I want you to explain why plants use photosynthesis. Okay, so I want you to go back to the text to help you retell or paraphrase the process of photosynthesis, and I want you to explain why plants use photosynthesis. So why is it important and why do they use it? Um, jot that down on a piece of paper, in a journal if you have one at home. Be ready to share it on Wednesday. And I will, I can't wait to see your explanations then your retells then rather. And for anybody that needs a reminder or another mini lesson on retelling, you should have checked out Miss Mosel's ELA lesson on paraphrasing for this week. And she explains it and reteaches it to you guys so beautifully. 
So check that out if you need a reminder of what paraphrasing is. But again, paraphrase the process of photosynthesis and Okay, boys and girls, now for our final part, we are going to do a photosynthesis quick lab. So we are going to take two identical plants. So I have two of these. Um, one will be plant A and one will be plant B. So we're going to take plant A and we're going to wrap each leaf individually in aluminum foil. And then we're going to keep the leaves of plant B uncovered. So this is plant A. I still have a couple I have to cover that I missed. So here's plant A with our leaves covered in aluminum foil. And here is plant B. So what I want for you to do is I want for you to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to each plant? So after four days, so Wednesday, uh, so Wednesday we'll do a check-in and then Friday I will, no, Thursday rather, Thursday I will um, record what happened and then next week I will show you the results or I'll show them to you on Zoom at some point. But we're going to record our observations. So if you look here at the screen, you see uncover plant A after four days, record your observations about each plant in the chart. So here's a very simple chart, plant A. What are we gonna notice? What, what observations can we make about plant A after we remove the tin foil? And what about plant B? What does plant B look like? What observations can you make about it after four days? So prior, I'm sorry, not prior, after, after you've uncovered it and you've made your observations for both A and B, I want you to infer. I want you to use your thinking voice and your reading voice to infer. Why do you think plant A and plant B differ after four days? Okay? Drawing conclusions. Where on plant where on a plant does photosynthesis take place and how can you tell? So after four days, you will be able to answer questions four and five, three. So for right now, what I'm asking you to do is take two identical plants if you have them, cover up the leaves on one, that will be your plant A, leave plant B leaves uncovered and predict what do you think will happen to each plant, okay? That is the end of chapter one, lesson one. Week three, distance learning. Hope you all are well. I miss you. We'll see you Wednesday to do some more studying of plants and their energy and photosynthesis. Okay, bye. I forgot to say that when you put the plants, both plant A and plant B, they need to be in the same container or in equal amount of water. So I put them in the same container that way they'll share the same parts of water and in a sunny area, okay?